Okay, so we will actually go ahead with the calculations which we are actually trying to do last time. So, I thought uh, I actually I have told last was the two metrics which have to be used for performance analysis. One of them was throughput. and other one was turnaround time. So, the way they are defined that throughput is nothing but average number of packets which are being pushed out. per unit time, that is how throughput is taken. It has nothing to do with the input, of course, if you keep on changing your input rate, throughput will change and throughput ultimately should saturate, okay. throughput ultimately should saturate. Turnaround time will be your average time interval. between instance when packet arrives at input of network n when packet leaves at the output of network. Okay. And of course, the maximum throughput will be existing when there are no conflicts. So, for example, at each input you have uh, packets in such a way that there are no conflicts and all of them can be pushed without any contention to the outgoing port. So, that will be the case for maximum throughput and minimum turnaround time also will happen when there are no conflicts because you will not be storing anything in the buffer you just pass through okay so usually then we use the normalized version of this so so whatever the maximum throughput possible you can normalize with that this will ensure your normalized throughput is always less than 1 Okay, this for comparison sake, it is independent of sizes now. So, that is a normalized value. Similarly, for turnaround time also, so what is the basic unit of time counting? You are essentially looking at that. So, you will divide it by minimum turnaround time. So, these are the two normalized versions which actually have to be used. So, first of all we will actually estimate the same thing for unbuffered delta, not the buffered one, but unbuffered one which we had done earlier. Okay. So, this one is pretty simple. So, for a 2 raise power n by 2 raise power n unbuffered delta, you can assume p k will be the probability that So, remember the case of strip, strip 
So, dip for different edges there will be different probabilities. So, I can actually iteratively compute if I know the input probability, I can compute what will be the output probability and that will give me a throughput that is basically is the idea here. Okay. And from here you can define p n in the similar fashion. This is probability that the packet arrive at output line. All n stages have been finished the total n minus 1 0 I am counting 0 1 2 3 n minus 1 are stages. The moment I talk about p n that is output link okay. because there is nothing like a s n stage is not there s 0 to s n minus 1 are there. So, this will be your technically your throughput actually. Now, uh, there are certain assumptions which have to be there. So, at every intermediate switch in general there can be many inputs and as we had done earlier, each one of them is going to connect to a set of inputs. So, each one of these inputs will be connecting to set of inputs of the network. So, in earlier case it was only two set i x and i y I was talking about, they were always disjoint. Here also all the sets which you are going to form will be disjoint. Once they are disjoint, since all arrivals at the network are independent and they are kind of independent identical processes actually arrival process. So, that independence also holds true here. In fact, it holds true at every intermediate switch. Okay. So, this actually means I can assume that p k is going to be same for all links, all input links to stage k. So, not only this switch in that stage whatever number of switches are there all inputs in that stage they will be all independent actually. So, there is no correlation between them. And this actually you can keep on extending it means this p n will be same for all output links also that independence will still be maintained. Hmm? Uh, not for output side, but yeah. This p k is same for all switches at stage k. Hmm? This k is the same for all p k is going to be same for all all switches in a stage k right. Each one is an independent set actually and each one of them will be now connecting to 2 raise power k inputs. So, since the number of inputs are actually being same to which it can reach and each set is different okay, within a switch it is each set will be different. So, this will be showing independence this is actually true for everybody. So, they are going to be same they are independent within a switch if you take two different switches then they are not independent because they might be coming from the same input, but since every packet is also coming independently <coughs> it is ok because independence comes because of the fact when a packet comes with e equal probability it is choosing an output destination. There is no bias with 1 by n probability 1 by 2 raise power n in this case it is going to choose any one of the output outgoing links and each packet in all inputs are going to do the same thing. So, statistically yeah, every input port is technically same, you just find out probability at one place use it at everywhere, unless you have asymmetric situation, it is a symmetric or uniform traffic conditions actually here. And important thing is that it is independent of what kind of delta network you are taking. Whether it is a shuffle net base or it is inverse bins or whatever you have you can design or it is a 
omega network or whatever it is. So, far it is a delta network the situation is going to be true. In fact, it is true for any banyan network not only this only in the case of banyan network is that tag the address tag will not be uniform for a given output address tag has to be different at different inputs for same output actually that is only variation. But so far that condition there is exactly one path from any input to any output is maintained and no input links and no output links in the intermediate stages are left open this is going to be true. Okay. Technically it is a demultiplexer tree which you are building all the time and of course, uh, this is now throughput I can write a simple statement from here. Now, paper actually gives slightly different variation here. Uh, I also could not figure out why it is being given that way, uh, but what it is saying is in the whole switching network of k stages when the packet enters and packet goes out that is a period which is min d. So, one lot of packet comes in it takes min d to go out and once the min d is over next then the next packet will come in. So, there is one packet being injected at each input or if p is the arrival rate or the probability of having a packet on this input side the p num uh, fraction of packet on an average are being injected per min d slot. So, min d is kind of a slot, but actually it is not required in one slot if I am moving from one stage to another stage. So, I can use pipeline when the packet moves here the another packet from input can come in here. So, technically my number of packets has to be this particular slot that assumption has not been taken while computing the throughput performance. So, throughput actually can be k times technically then what I am writing okay, if this pipelining is also assumed. So, pipelining is not assumed in the paper that is one thing which is done there. So, throughput will be nothing but p raise power n which is probability that you are going to have a packet at the output link and total number of output links will be 2 raise power n and these many packets will go per min d slot, but need not be per min d slot it can be per min d divided by k. So, k times higher actually it can be achieved. So, that will be the throughput I am just going to state whatever they have told. So, this will be the throughput for all unbuffered delta networks. In fact, for that matter all banyan networks. So, far that condition is satisfied that no input and output links in the intermediate stages are left open and you have exactly one path from each input to each output. And this we have to just estimate what is p n, what p n has to be done through a recursion you cannot make a direct estimate once the p at the input link is given. So, in this case now every stage you are going to have a switch remember and you are connecting them like this whatever way I am not bothered currently something must have been done. Now, each of this switch can be of a by b size general cross bar or uh, in this case it has been taken as b symmetric case it is not asymmetric case you can solve for asymmetric case also that is also fine where a and b both are not equal. Now, number of packets which are going to come are binomially distributed their b inputs as a sing single unit cross bar remember which is a sim simple switch. So, for a cross bar of actually you can do it for in general for a by b also this paper does for b by b. So, 
the packets which will arrive will be binomially distributed. So, there can be j packets which can be arriving and this arrival can happen with the probability, here the probability is p k remember, probability that a packet will come will be p k at input port. So, this actually means b c j that is the probability that j packets will come and probability that a packet you take an output link. So, this probability is nothing but will be p k plus 1. So, probability you will have a packet on the out outgoing link that probability is there has to be at least one packet out of these which is selected here. This can happen for all outgoing links with equal probability. So, this can be estimated as probability a packet And this is under the condition that given that j packets arrive at inputs. So, this value will be nothing but you will simply say that each packet, now this is a conditional probability, j packets have already arrived, I have to multiply by this, this is a conditional probability remember. So, this probability is that out of these j packets which have arrived under that condition, none of them is being directed to an outgoing port, I can find out that probability and each outgoing port is going to be selected with equal probability actually the 1 by b. So, you will have 1 minus 1 over b that is the selection probability, see and 1 minus 1 over b that you are not going to select an outgoing port, none of the j packets will be going to select an outgoing port is this and 1 minus of this at least 1 is going to select an outgoing port 1 minus of that. So, that is a conditional probability that packet will be there given j packets okay. and then of course, you can find out what is p k plus 1 from here. So, from here p k plus 1 So, j can go from 0 to b and of course, this is a conditional probability 1 minus 1 minus 1 over b j and I just multiplied by whatever is the condition which was b c j. So, this is absolute probability that there will be at least one packet at the outgoing port. I have just summed up with all possible j's. The condition thing I have removed technically. So, this actually can be solved and this will turn out to be. So, this whole thing now can be written as this one actually I am taking out summation of one minus one over b j and p k I can combine actually. So, this term is a complete binomial, so it will become 1. This one is also I can always write a raise power j and b raise power p plus q raise power b that form I can use again it is a complete binomial okay. and based on that I can get the solution. So, it is an iterative thing which we will get actually. So, it will be 1 minus
So, that will be the probability of p k plus 1 in terms of p k. At this I think you can also figure out was for input queues we have done similar thing when the packets were dropped ok. Except this p k was converted to something else there and of course, you can always take for the maximum loading condition p 0 can be taken as 1 and from there I can find out what is the maximum possible throughput which you can have. So, even buffer delta will always have throughput which is lower than this, that is the maximum which you can get. This, this, this is not maximum sorry, this is not maximum. So, this throughput is p 0 is at 1 you can compute and maximum throughput is all outgoing packets will have a without conflict this is a maximum throughput you divide by this actually. So, normalized throughput your you will get is nothing but p of n which you have to get from here, but this has to be solved through recursion. So, p 1 will be 1 minus 1 minus 1 over b because p 0 is 1. So, this is going to be smaller value actually every time the value will keep on reducing decaying actually. So, every step you will do it after k stages find out what is the value of p n and that is your throughput that is a normalized throughput the whole p n you are dividing by this value. Actual throughput which I defined was p n into 2 raise power n by, but maximum which you can achieve is when all outgoing ports will actually have one packet every mindy slot. And if you allow pipelining you multiply it by k. Min d s contains uh, k, slot. K, k sub slots, each sub slot you go from one input stage from the input of a stage to output of this stage for every stage. Sir, you have to sum up, uh, I mean recursively means p, uh, you assume p k plus 1 and then uh, further you have to go or uh, just p k 1, p k plus 1 will be. You know how to get p k plus 1 from p k. Yes. So, if you know p 0 is being 1 under maximum loading condition what is p 1 you can find out. Yes, so, p 1 will be? You need to sum up all these after this. No. Why you need to sum up? You are getting absolute value sum up is only when p 0, p 1, p 2, p 3 all values are there you do not know their values, but you know their relations. So, then use last one when you will say sum of all probabilities has to be equal to 1 is the last equation which makes your number of equations become equal to number of variables to solve each one of them. Here you are getting the values actually directly, there is no Markov chain actually, it is not a Markov chain. You will put 1 over 1 minus b, this is the p 1 with value b, p 2 you will can find out now putting p 1. find out p 3, p 4, so on iteratively is a recursive relation which you can get at best. Sir, why are you using angle expressions over here? I mean that is what I get. There are n inputs, uh, we can use exponential or even Poisson ratio for that. I am not worried, I am not worried about the input statistics, input statistics the packet is always there. So, in a input statistics cannot be exponential or Poisson remember there is a reason for that I am talking about a discrete event discrete time system is a slots. So, packet can only start here and it can be it has to close by one slot. So, only statistics which you can use is either a packet can be there or cannot be there. So, this is nothing but p you use the probability. So, on an average how many packets per unit slot you will have it is p, p is a probability then and that is the arrival rate <coughs> per line. 
So, most of the discrete time systems that is what you are using going to use for packet based packet switching systems. Packets are not coming at any arbitrary time interval. If that is permitted, then that is a different situation. In our case, it is not. It is a fixed length packets coming, one packet can come in one time slot. You cannot have two coming in actually. Those systems actually can be done, uh, but usually the way we do it in that case is if you have a switch for example, and there is one outgoing link with buffer, and there are many inputs which are coming in, they are not time synchronized. All these packets which are coming will be put in one single queue. Now, since they are not time synchronized, I cannot get uh, in this case technically what I am assuming because all pack all slots are synchronized they are fixed length in one time slot I can get either 0 packet I can get 1 I can get 2 I can get 3 that is a binomial thing. But if I do not I am not permitting synchronization and all packet are of fixed length then packet can arrive at any point of time on time scale they cannot then all of them need not come simultaneously it is not 0 1 2 3 in a slot. So, packets will come sometimes here sometimes here sometimes here then I talk about inter arrival time which is exponentially distributed or alternatively a Poisson distribution that how many number of packets will come in per unit time. Because these are all independent they because of that independence I can take that assumption not at a source, source usually actually have a correlated uh, what we call arrival process. But as you go into the core when the packets will get dispersed and packets are coming from various different sources then only Poisson statistics can be assumed. Mr. Sir, had I made some assumption like number of packet tends to infinity and probability of each packet arriving is very close to 0, then I could have approximated it by Poisson distribution. In that case, it would have turned out to be a limiting case of binomial distribution. Sir. Fine, but then what is happening is uh, you are assuming this time slot to be very small, very small. that is what you are technically doing. So, continuous time variable is nothing but a limiting case of this. When packet can arrive not at discrete intervals, but at any time interval, at any time instant. Real life always works this way, it is not this. But if there are many incoming lines, you cannot control what is happening in the behind, you can always use it as a Poisson thing. So, when you look at this kind of queuing system, okay, then you will say that the statistics arrival at statistics here is Poisson. But that does not matter. We will always be doing the poison, uh, this thing, binomial only. Poison will not give the length of the packet. It will give the only poison will give only the, the time. number of packets which are going to come per unit time. Per unit time. The length of the packet will tell you what will be the uh, departure process. If all packets are of fixed length, it's a deterministic uh, departure process. So you know that what's going to be. It is a fixed length. If you know packets are only of length L and L1 and L2, there are only two deterministic uh, departure times, either it will take time T1 or T2 with some statistical distribution. And if it is exponentially distributed, that is what we assume most of the time, then you will define this thing as 1 over mu will be the average processing time or number of packets which can be processed per unit time will be mu is the departure rate. But we are not looking at these cases here. Important thing is that we are going to use a iterative thing to build up the outgoing probability. So, you will be able to get p n from here and hence for the throughput performance. Sir, what is the intuitive explanation for uh, in unbuffered case we are having throughput higher than in the buffered case? Is because in unbuffered buffered case, case you can see that every time the probability is going down. So, I am actually assuming if there are j packets for example, I am taking these 4 ports, I get all 4 packets, all 4 wants to go to this outgoing port, only one of them will be going. So, remember when I am looking at the probability, I am actually telling even if 1 or more than 1 if they are trying to go to an outgoing port, 1 will go, that is how I am estimating p k plus 1. So, it means remaining are being dropped. 
while in case of a buffer delta case this is not going to happen. And of course, we are using a buffer delta model we are using a back propagation of the signal. So, that the input itself uh, at least we will get the what is the maximum throughput which can be achieved under maximum loading condition. In this case you put maximum loading the throughput is limited to p n when p 0 is going to be 1. So, you will find this as a maximum throughput cross bar I need not do this iterative calculation cross bar and this are only different in what this is a calculation for a cross bar technically. Okay. B by B cross bar, but I am using recursive nature of that. So, every time probability is falling down because of recursion. In case of a single cross bar, same thing will now become your P 1 is 1 minus 1 minus whatever was P 0 2 raise power n 2 raise power n that will be your throughput performance. So, P 0 you can make it 1 if it is a full loading condition. So, this is what will be your value and of course, when n becomes very large 2 to the power n becomes very large this can be approximated as so P 0 you can put to 1 1 minus e to the power minus 1 which is 0.632. So, that is a maximum throughput which you can achieve with a cross bar single cross bar the whole switch is implemented using a single cross bar or I am using it implementing by multiple cross bars now by creating delta network. Yeah, there is one single cross bar being used for the whole switch. So, unbuffered delta we know that how we will compute for this one we know how we are going to compute, but this has to be done computationally there is no closed form expression which can be plotted, but these are exact computational results which will be there. Sir, we have calculated from the delta. delta the throughput is p n into p n throughput will be p n. p n divided by this maximum. So, similarly you can also normalize this also if you wish you have technically normalized this when you say p 1. So, maximum is whatever is to this power n divided by min d. So, that you have normalized so p 1 is your throughput here is that is a p n. So, p n certainly will be less than p 1 or more. So, what we want to say for all loop less to n delta network the performance under those scenarios performance is almost same. In Throughput performance will be same for all delta networks. All delta network under those conditions, what is mentioned? Under all blocking conditions, because there is no blocking technically. The switches are all symmetric in one single stage, and all inputs are independent. If the independence is not there, then there the performance will be different. Then you have to assign the input ports such a way that if there are two correlated inputs, which are always going to pump the packets, make sure there is two correlated pick, uh, packets are always going at different switches in the different stages. They should not never come to the same stage because they will not they should not try to pump the packet simultaneously. Second case we have calculated for is a cross bar implementation. No, the p k plus one being calculated. This one. This one is a cross bar. Single this, is a, this is a single cross bar implementation of the 2 raise power n by 2 raise power n switch. First previous one p k plus one that one I am using b by b switches to create 2 raise power n by 2 raise power n switch but delta. So, there is one uh, doubt in this a cross b if we have uh, does uh, throughput will be same or uh, for I assume the formula will become different that is only thing formula will be different in that case. Uh, uh, you can compute not an issue you can compute for a by b I should have done that because that is done in the earlier paper I had actually is have not done the analysis at that time because that was anyway required to be done here, but this paper only talks about the symmetric case. So, for a by b it will be. So, what is the probability if you have a probability p k known here what is the probability that you will get at least one packet on this side 
So, each packet is being uniformly distributed over this thing. Okay. So, number of packets which will be j, you can actually compute that. So, okay. so p k by b that is a packet will go, is going to go, uh, come to certain outgoing port. Okay. None of the packets are going to come to this outgoing port. 1 minus of this and all possible j scenarios actually. No, all this is will be a sorry, this will be a all inputs. This one only tells that at this particular input, I will have a packet with probability p k with p k by b, this packet will be directed to this outgoing port. 1 minus of that this packet which is going to come here will not be directed here. This should be true for all a. So, I have to multiply it by a is not b a b b here that is the only difference which will come. And 1 minus of this there will be at least one packet going to which is going to come out here. So, your p k 1 this will be equal to p k plus 1. So, this recursive relation will change in this case. No, unbuffered. There is no buffering here. Buffer delta is tricky to handle. Then, when I normalize that relation by P, I get the second restriction 2 power n by mu. Nee, remember in the switch, total outgoing ports are 2 raise power n best case can be when every mindy slot one packet is going out. If one packet is going out every mindy slot, so throughput performance is to the power n packets per mindy slot that is a maximum throughput. So, whatever throughput actually compute divide by this to normalize it. So, that is what is being done. So, you divide this by to the power n by mindy you will get this. So, you will get p k p n will be the throughput I have written somewhere here. Yeah. So, this will be p n will be the normalized throughput. So, I just find out what is the value probability at the outgoing port per port throughput I am estimating technically. Okay. Per port maximum throughput is 1. So, I am just estimating that p n. So, uh, in, <coughs> in the previous this thing sir, we took uh, 1 minus 1 by v there is for j. So, that is j is the count of number of packets which are coming at the input. At the input. Uh, I could have directly calculated also. By read it explicitly for j packets come with conditioned on j. So, uh, since a is the number of input lines, should not it be a p k sir and the uh, it should be raised to a p k because a p k will give the number of packets. Number of I am not Arrival clear. Rate is PK, you are telling this has to be p k by b raised to power a p k. Yes, uh, at least it is raised to that exponential where it is number of packets which are there. Okay, I, let me compute with j packets if you want the other way around. This is a direct calculation. Suppose j packets are going to come here, what is the probability for that? A c j when j packets have arrived, what is the probability that at least one packet will be coming to an outgoing port? So, this is a condition. So, that probability is 1 minus 1 over b j total j packets sum it over j j can go from 0 to a remember solve it you will get exactly same thing that p k will not come in the exponent just a way to understand actually. So, both are fine no question so far. So, next is now we have to go to the actual analysis of buffer delta system. Now, buffer delta system I have to now look into what we call state transitions of a switch. So, before I move on to uh, that particular thing I have to define the switch state. Now, remember there are buffers which are involved here. So, there are all possible combinations are there. So, we will define 14 states of the switches here and that I will use in a building up the recursive relation. Again, this is done through a recursive relation, which is computationally computed. Okay. There is no simulation, it is a actual calculation which has to be done. 
So, it is a computational procedure. So, there is no closed form expression as such, but computationally you will get the exact values. So, the model goes like this most of the states I am looking into 2 by 2 thing. So, one state is when the buffer on the outgoing side which is nothing but the input buffer of the next stage. Okay. That is free and this is free that is one particular possible state. So, this is known as state 1. Yeah. So, I am keeping all the inputs free and then trying to put packets on the output side buffer. So, one possible states I am just enumerating the states now when you will have only one packet. Now, you can say this packet can be here or this packet can be here, but both are equivalent states. So, both are going to be all equivalent states are merged together the way we had done earlier. Okay. So, equivalence is I can rotate swap do whatever it is, but input and output cannot be swapped the way we, we did in the earlier case okay. in case of that white sense non blocking system. So, this is a state 2. third one will be now, when I will have two packets which will be there, this is state 3. Whenever the packets are there at the input buffer, they will be directed to some outgoing port. There was no direction of the packet was shown, because there were no packets at the input buffer. So, in this case, this is what will be the direction. Now, remember even if I this direction is not this, I put it like this way, this is equivalent to the earlier states, because I can swap these two ports. So, it does not matter. Okay. So, I will represent this thing by this, the, because these numbers will be used remember these state numbers. I will be mentioning in the subscripts later on for the in that computational model. Then you will have a state So, I am looking at one input and then one in output, two output kind of combinations all possibilities. So, one is this, this is state 5. Now, this input can be directed to this one, that is one possibility, this can be directed to a free port, that is a sixth state. Now, whether you direct to bot top or bottom, it is all the same. There is only one input. Basically, this cannot go because this is already filled up. Hmm? So, this is a state 7. Then you have all cases when one input was there in the switch are taken care of, now two inputs which are there. So, if there are free ports, one possibility is both of them will conflict, that is a state 8. They do not conflict, that is a state 9. So, whether it is a bar state or cross state does not matter, there is no conflict. When two inputs are there, both will be state 9. State 7? Hmm? State 7 will be conflicting. Conflict can only happen if you have more than one input, but it cannot go on to the outgoing buffer, because the next buffer is occupied for some reason. So, no outputs I have taken care of. One. This could be one case, this could be one case,
and then you will have a state number 13 and a state number 14. Cross and bar states in this case are ex exactly same, they will all merge into state 13. So, whether the conflict happens because both want to go up or both want to go down, both are same states here. There are total 14 states which we have to define for a switch. So, all switches will always be existing in one of these 14 states in a buffer delta system. Okay, so, now uh, here I actually uh, close uh, the today's lecture and we will start now looking into probabilities and steps which are required for doing computational stuff for buffer delta. So, that we will do on Thursday. Uh, you have to actually refer to the paper, because I am trying to do it as slowly as possible, but still there will be confusions.